In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create and edit gradients, which are called fountain fills in CorelDRAW. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. A gradient can be applied to shapes, text, and any other object that is a closed curve, like this ellipse. Gradients cannot be applied to lines or bitmaps. Gradient fills are added with the Interactive Fill tool, which is located at the bottom of the toolbox and has the G shortcut. When this tool is active and I select the ellipse, the property bar contains the set of fill options and uniform is the current option. I'll switch to fountain fill for gradient options. By default, the gradient proceeds linearly from the full uniform fill color at the left to white on the right. Each of the controls can be used to adjust the gradient. I can drag either color node to adjust where the gradient begins and ends, drag the slider to adjust the rate of change, and drag the round node to adjust the angle. I can also start over by clicking and dragging. Note that I don't actually have to choose the fountain fill option. When this uniform filled ellipse is selected with the pick tool, and I activate the interactive fill tool, I can simply click and drag to create a gradient, which automatically switches to the fountain fill option. There are several ways to change gradient colors. I can click either color node and choose a new color, or I can drag a swatch from the color palette directly onto a color node. Gradients can be adjusted in the property bar as well. Clicking a color node displays that color, which can be changed, along with node transparency, which we'll look at a bit farther on. All gradient properties can also be adjusted in the properties docker, which can be opened by choosing window dockers properties, or by clicking the plus sign below the tabs of open dockers. The Fills tab is where these properties are found. Gradients are not limited to just two colors. I'll add an intermediate color by dragging a swatch onto the gradient line, and I can adjust the position of the new node. I can also double click along the gradient line to add a new color node. This node is assigned the color along the range, which I can change. An intermediate node can be removed by double clicking on it. In addition to changing gradient colors, there are other options on the property bar and properties docker to modify gradients, such as reverse fill. I'll shorten the gradient line, which maintains the proportional distance between intermediate nodes, and switch from the default arrangement to repeat and mirror, then to just repeat. The smooth option smooths the transitions. I'll go back to the default fill and use the acceleration slider to adjust how quickly the colors blend from one to the next. The default acceleration is zero. For more precise gradient editing, I can click Edit Fill, where all gradient options appear in a single place, and I can see edits in real time and on the preview. Linear Fountain Fill is the default, but I can switch to Elliptical, which transitions radially from a center point, or Conical, which gives the appearance of looking down onto a 3D cone. I'll add a rectangle next keep it selected, and I want to copy the fill from the ellipse. I'll press G for the interactive fill tool, click Copy Fill, and click the fill of the ellipse to apply it to the rectangle. Now I can switch the type to Rectangular Fill and adjust the fill a bit to match the shape. Adding translucency to gradient color nodes is a nice way to add realistic shading or overlay effects. In this example, I'll activate the Interactive Fill tool, click the arrow on the right to select it, and click and drag to change the Uniform Fill to a gradient, keeping Shift pressed so the gradient line stays horizontal. Instead of solid white at the start, I'll click the Color node and increase its transparency. This can be done in the Property Bar or Properties Docker as well. Now I can use the Pick tool to select the other two arrows, activate the Interactive Fill tool, Use Copy Fill to get the same gradient, and replace the non-translucent colors. Note that the Transparency tool also has a Fountain Fill option. With this tool active, if I select the middle arrow and switch to Fountain Transparency, the gradient interaction appears similar. But with this tool, 
Only transparency properties can be assigned to nodes, and the settings affect the entire object, including both outline and fill. As mentioned at the beginning, gradients can be applied to text, whether or not the text is converted to curves. This text was created with the text tool, and I'll select it with the pick tool, then activate the interactive fill tool, drag to create a gradient and switch to elliptical, adjust the limits, and add some fun colors along the gradient line. I can even add increasing translucency to the outer nodes. Finally, there are a few preset fountain fills you can choose from in the Fill Picker dropdown. Each can be adjusted as needed. This dropdown has a Get More icon, which opens the store in the welcome screen where you can find the free fountain fills bundle. Installing is easy, just click the bundle, download it, and install. Once installed, there are over 70 fills to choose from. Now say I've created my own fountain fill, or edited one of the presets, and want to save the fill for later use. I can click the Save icon in the Properties Docker, or on the Fill Picker dropdown, assign a name, and add it to an existing category, or create a new category. To use my saved fill on this selected curve, I'll switch to Fountain Fill in the Properties Docker, open the dropdown to find my saved fill, and drag it into the curve. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating gradients in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.